My name's Jane Moorhead and I'm a consultant clinical scientist at King's College Hospital in Histopathology and I'm also working for NHS England as a scientific advisor regarding the transformation of uh, the workforce with regard to genomic medicine. I'm Louise Jones, I'm a consultant pathologist and um, an academic. I work at Bart's Cancer Institute and Bart's NHS Trust. I specialise in breast cancer and I also run a research group looking at early breast cancer and risk prediction. Things have changed in pathology significantly as a result of advances in genomics. This has had an impact on not just the diagnosis of the cancer, but also the prognosis and prediction to response. Whereas traditionally, of course, we look down the microscope at the morphology of tissue to give a diagnosis, what we find now is that we're getting much more information that we integrate with that morphology. This means that histopathology has really broadened in its remit. It means that we undertake integrated reporting now of both morphology and genomic analysis. It's also broadened the team that's involved with the patient care. So now the histopathologist interacts very closely with the clinical scientist, with the biomedical scientist looking after the samples and with the oncologist in order to deliver a robust and dependable report to the patient. Now with genomic testing, we're doing additional tests that are also quantitated in order to determine prognosis and therapy. Because of this, it's absolutely essential that we standardise how we handle that tissue so that every result is absolutely correct and we can depend on that. One of the major changes is the acquisition of fresh tissue so that DNA can be extracted from this rather than formalin fixed tissue which impacts hugely on the quality of the DNA for whole genome sequencing and extended panel sequencing. BMS's biomedical scientists have a significant role to play. Their extended roles in dissection and cut-up is an important factor that needs to be taken into account. They also have a role to play in tumour assessment, ensuring that there are sufficient tumour nuclei in a sample before DNA is extracted. One major area of impact of genomics in pathology is really, I think, increased uh, subtyping and stratification of tumour types so that we can better predict prognosis as well as target in increasingly for therapy. Genomics is used for cancer patients in a number of different types of cancer. Lung cancer is one of the ones that's benefited mostly from it. At the moment, um, patients are tested for specific variants, and if they have those appropriate variants, they will respond to certain treatments. Until fairly recently, um, there was one treatment available. If they responded, that was very good, but they tended to relapse relatively quickly. And at that point, the patient would then move on to um, standard chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Nowadays, though, the hope is that the um, oncologist can help these patients live with cancer rather than die of it. So when they relapse on the first line treatment, then they can move on to another targeted therapy, second and third line treatments, and so on. Probably about 80% of breast cancers are of a single histological subtype called infiltrating ductal carcinoma. Um, however, what we know from recent large-scale genomic studies is that there are at least 10 different kinds of infiltrating ductal carcinoma and they differ in their behaviour and probably will have different therapeutic implications. And it can only be a matter of time before we are using these genomic tests to also be able to better subtype and so better stratify patient care. This technology is moving forwards at a pace, so it's, it's good to embrace it. It's giving us all huge opportunities and really exciting times coming up. So I think that molecular medicine has been quite a long time in the development, but it's actually really exploding now. And there are many changes and transformations taking place in different strands of medicine that mean that the infrastructure for more broad, more consistent, more global testing of patients with cancer is ready to be done. One thing I would say about molecular medicine and pathology is that pathologists need to embrace this, that it is our future, that the patient's samples are our patients and we should be handling them and getting the most information that we possibly can and this is the way to do it. This is happening right now.